Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong. Here I like to talk about luxury beauty and I have to say January has been a crazy month with releases. We have spring collections from Dior and Chanel and I have separate videos on all of them. And today we're going to kind of go through and I'm going to share with you what my favorite items are from those collections from everything that released. So we'll go through, you know, anything that I've learned since I've been playing with it, as well as, you know, my personal preferences. We're going to start off with the eyeshadows. So this here is the Chanel Mediterranean in 747. Let's go ahead and swatch this. And first of all, I think the starburst design on here is really beautiful. I personally really like that. I think it's a gorgeous aesthetic. This is a shimmery eyeshadow palette. It's kind of light neutrals with a little bit of peachiness to it. And I think it's a really gorgeous quad if you are looking for something with this color story. But again, it is very shimmery, so it's not gonna be for everybody. I personally really like it, but I have to say that I um, still prefer the number five quad that came out recently to that. Then we have the Dior Quint in 719 Organza. And this one, I almost didn't pick this one up at first because I was thinking it would be like too warm and peachy for me, but I love this Quint. <laughs> so I have really been enjoying this one a lot. So these are the five shades for the Quint. You can see that there is a little bit of a similar vibe to the Chanel here, in my opinion. So yes, the Chanel is a little bit more neutral. It's also more shimmery. So you've got more peachiness here with the Quint. But if you kind of just like isolate like this from here, you do have a very similar vibe. And between the two of these, I have to say, I actually prefer the Dior over the Chanel this time, which... You know, I wasn't expecting because looking at them in the pan, the Dior or the Chanel is my preference over the Dior, but on my eyes, I tend to prefer the Dior. So this one here is 839 Popoline from Dior. You've got a topper shade there, so it's a little bit harder to see. And you can see how cool toned, like satiny pink the middle shade is. So in the individual videos for this, I do go through you know, the finishes, comparisons, and things like that. So definitely, you know, check that out. But these are the three eyeshadow quads and, or eyeshadow palettes, I should say. I think they're all really pretty. My personal preference for these would be Dior Ganza, followed by Chanel Mediterranean, and then Popoline. I think the Popoline is nice. It's nice to see the pink with like cooler tones. A lot of the pink palettes have been coming out are cooler in tone. But I just feel like these pinks are all pretty similar on the eye. There's not that much, there's not a lot of, you know, differences between them. You can see differences more so in the swatches, but on the eyes, they look very similar. And, you know, even though you have this shade here, it's really not punchy enough to really make a huge difference in the color story there. So Popoline is my least favorite of these. Um, but I do, I like all of them. If I were to pick only one though, it would be the Dior Organza followed by the Chanel. Now I wanted to move on to the Chanel number one to Chanel foundation. So this one is currently exclusive to Ulta and Chanel, and it looks like that's how it's staying. It does not look like it will be going to any other retailers, just Chanel and Ulta. Now I have the shade BD01, which, you know, is a relatively new shade for Chanel. So when I purchased the Le Beige, when that first came out, I have shade BR12 for that. So I'm just going to do a few foundation swatches here for you. But out of the Chanel foundations I have, it is most similar to the um, Le Beige. And this here is the number one in BD01. I also have a sample of it in the BR12. So here's the BR12 in the Chanel number one. You can see how much rosier that is. It's also a little bit darker. And that's kind of been my issue with the BR12. You know, I like I, I like it and it was my best match prior to BD01, but it's always been just a little bit darker than I'd like. This one here is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation. Now, I really like these. 
all, you know, I think both of these foundation formulas are very nice. The Le Beige is slightly runnier than the Chanel. And I think it also provides a little bit more coverage. You know, it, it really, I think it gives a little bit more coverage with the way that it sits on your skin, but it's also more glowy. So if you're just looking at these swatches, you can even see between the number one and the LA Beige, you can see little hints of my skin through both of these sections compared to LA Beige. So there's definitely a difference in coverage. I feel like the Chanel number one, it's buildable, but it's buildable to the lightest edge of medium. <laughs> so it's really more of a light to light medium. Whereas the Le Beige truly can go up to medium coverage. So it, you do get a little bit more coverage with that. Now I do wanna say that they both also have a different fragrance. The number one de Chanel, I feel like this is a lighter fragrance. It is the number one fragrance that they came out with with this line, which is, you know, it's more like fruity florally. Um, so it's, but it's also like less intense. So I feel like I don't notice the fragrance so much with the Chanel number one. Whereas the Le Beige, you have, you know, it's that more like, it just smells more perfumey to me. It's a stronger fragrance when I put this on, like right now during the winter, I don't necessarily notice it quite as much, but during the summer, the heat makes it a little bit more intense. And I do notice the fragrance when I'm putting that on. So for me, personal preference between the two of them would be the number one, just partially because of the fragrance. And I also like how it's got this dewy glow to it, but it's not quite as sheeny. I feel like the number one looks slightly more natural on the skin, still glowy. It's like more of a glowy natural, whereas the Le Beige is, it's a little bit glowier than that, but there's like a, like a sheen to it. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's almost like there's like a touch of like highlighter mixed into the formula, if that makes sense. Not, not much, you know, it's definitely not like a high shine formula or anything like that. But in comparison with the number one de Chanel, it just seems to have a little bit more of that metallic-y highlighter finish to it compared to the number one. And again, wearing the Le Beige, you know, you don't necessarily notice that quite so much. It's more so in comparison. Um, so I think both are really great foundations, but if I had to pick one, it would be the number one de Chanel. I have to say, I really like the way it looks, but I do think that the Le Beige is longer lasting. Um, the number one de Chanel, it's, it just, it, it doesn't seem to like, you know, separate or anything like that. But I feel like the coverage is on the lighter side and I feel like some of that fades a little bit after a long day. For like a typical eight to 10 hour day, I feel like there are no issues. But if you're going like a longer time period, I feel like um, the coverage seems to fade just a little bit. And again, I don't notice anything on my skin, like it breaking up or anything like that. So I, I can't see it. It just kind of seems like some of it rubbed away essentially. And those are my thoughts on those. Now, I just wanted to compare one more thing. This is the Chanel Ultra Latent in BD01. And I just wanted to show you how the, the two BD01 shades compare. So the this here is the Ultra Latent. It hasn't had a chance really to oxidize yet. But on some shades of the number one de Chanel, some of them, uh, you know, people have told me that they have been a little bit lighter in their particular shade formulation. On mine, they're pretty similar. Um, so just wanted to give you a heads up, but if you can get a sample to try first, definitely do a sample and check that out. Moving on to glow sticks. Chanel released a glow stick in Ansoleil. And this is my first one that I have purchased from Chanel. So here's Ensoleil. Let's just build that up a little bit more. And you can see it's a little bit of a shiny metallic peachy shade. Then we have two from Chanel. So this one here is 725 Rose Glow. And I purchased this one intending to use it for a blush. It works for a blush, but it's very light. So unless you like pile it on, like I did here in the swatch, 
you know, um, if you pile it on, it, it's a little bit, it can be a little sticky. So uh, if you blend it out, it's really more pink highlighter. And this is the shade 005 Opal Glow. Okay, so you can see that this is going to be kind of like a white opalescent shade. Really great as a highlighter. And I do have all of these on my cheeks right now. And I will show you the demo of that in just a second. But for my personal preferences, I think I like the Chanel formula slightly more than the Dior. The Dior feels a little bit more, like a little bit more emollient and stickier to me. Now, if I pile on either of them or either formula, they are definitely gonna be tacky to the touch. Your hair can stick in them. So even right now where I have it more blended out, it's it's a little tacky. So it's not really, none of these are gonna be a favorite product for me. But out of these three, my favorite is actually gonna be the Opal because I really like this as a highlight. And I feel like if you're using it in the amount required for a highlight, then it actually, you know, it, it's not sticky at all then. Now the Ensoleil, and the Rose Glow, I do like those. I put them on over foundation today, but I've also worn them underneath foundation. And if you pile them on and then put the foundation on top, you don't really have the stickiness and they look nice, but I have to say the Rose Glow is so light that I don't really see that one. Um, the Ensoleil, however, that works. And that's probably gonna be more of a preference for me with this particular product. Although I have to say, I like the way I have them on right now. I think it's a very light summery look. So there are definitely products that I'm going to use, but I wouldn't say that they are favorites. And that's mostly just because I'm not huge on having something tacky feeling on my, my cheeks. So let me cut to the demo. You can see how I create this look and all the products that I use. Then we'll come back and do some more uh, com you know, all right, so right now I have on the Chanel number no. one foundation. I'm going to do a mix on my cheeks of the Dior. This is the Rose Glow Balm and the Chanel Ensoleil. So I'm just going to get some on the brush. So I'm going to start with the Ensoleil and get some of the pink as well. Just kind of spreading that on my hand here just to make sure that's the color. And just gonna put this on here. And this is the Refer 17 brush, which is technically a foundation brush, but I really like to use this for cream blushes. All right, so that's gonna be my blush for today. And for highlight, we are going to use the opal shade from the Dior. So with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my finger here and just going to get a little bit of this right up here. All right, for the eyes, I have the Vizier Eye Primer on. Going into the Chanel 747 Mediterranean, and I'm gonna go into the first shade here. This is the T7 from Chickahodo. And I'm just gonna take this and put this kind of all over the lid here. I'm just gonna take a touch of this deepest shade right here on the top part of the bristles. And I'm just gonna blend this softly in the crease here. And then I'm moving into Dior 839 Popoline. I'm gonna get a little bit of this pink in the middle here. Ooh, you can see that's pretty intense. I'm just gonna lightly put this on the inner portion here, right over the Chanel. And getting a little bit of that in the inner corner as well, just for a slightly different look. And then from there, I'm just gonna take this topper shade in the Popoline palette and just going to lightly pat this over here. Lower lash line, I'm gonna go back into this first shade in the Chanel, and I'm using the Refer 26 brush, and just gonna softly put this on here. 
For eyeliner, I'm going to take the Chanel Celia in 42 Gris Graphite. And I'm just going to put this along the upper lash line here. All right, so I added the Givenchy Brow Pencil in 2 and the Sicily Mascara in Brown. It's a Sicily So Stretch. And for lips, we're going in with the Chanel Rouge Coco Balm, keeping things light today. So I'm going to actually go a little bit more vibrant. It's 922 Passion Pink. But I'm just going to put a light layer of this on. So that's just one sheer layer of Passion Pink. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. So this is my final look. All right, so next we're gonna move on to blushes. So this is Dior 352. This is Rose Dentelle, and it is a light pink. You know, blushes, they, they never swatch super well. I'm just gonna build that up a little bit more. But here you go, you can see it's kind of like, um, it's a soft rosy shade with a hint of peach in it. I really like this blush. So let's look at the Chanel ones as well. We have the La Comet and Corail Etoile. And I do have comparisons with these, you know, with all of these in the original videos, but I did have one more request for 219 from Dior, Rose Montagna with this Corail Etoile. So I'm gonna put that right here. And you can see that Rose Montagna is going to be much rosier. So uh, we've got Corail Etoile, which is Coral Star. So this has much more orange in it versus a cooler tone pink in Rose Montagna. And then moving on, we have the Peche Cosmique. This is another one of the La Comet blushes. And I really think of this more as kind of like a mix-in type of thing. You can use it as a highlighter. You can use it to dilute a blush, to give it a soft glow. You can use it as a finishing powder. And all of these have like a lenticular image where you can see a star and the CC in the lid. So I think that's really cool. Doesn't last long though. The one on my Coriolis Toile is already, you know, disappearing. And then we have Brun Roussy. This is one of the Blush Lumieres from Chanel. And I don't have the shade, but the, the Brun Rouge that came out from Chanel last year in the regular line, it's essentially the exact same shade, but it doesn't have the golden shimmer. Now in the swatches, I feel like you can't really see the golden shimmer as well, but it's there. There's kind of like a metallic gold sheen to both of these. So this one here is Peche Rosé, and you can see the gold a little bit more in the peach shade, but they both have it. So these are the blushes that have come out that are in powder formula. Now, it may be a little surprising, but my favorites are actually going to be the Dior Rose Dentel and the Peche Cosmique from Chanel. I absolutely love these. And then the Brun Roussy from Chanel. I really love the Corail Etoile as well. I think it's gorgeous. It's a nice formula, but it's very similar to last year's Fleur de Printemps, which I have. Um, so I just feel like it's not that unique of a color, but I do actually, you know, I really, really like it. The Rosentel is a little bit more unique. So it's Peche Cosmique and Brun Rouge is unique to my collection. But again, if you have Chanel Brun Rouge, then, you, you know, it's pretty similar. And then the Peche Rosé, I just don't love it on me. I think it's a nice color. It'll look better on people with warmer skin tones than me. So for me, my order of preference is Rose Dentel. Peche Cosmique. I, I can't say that this is like actually an order of preference though, because this is more of a blush, whereas this I kind of use for everything. <laughs> so I think both of these products are great to have, followed by Brun Rouge C. And again, I think the Coriolis Etoile is gorgeous. And if you did not get Florida Print Top last year, then it might be something to pick up. But it's not a super unique shade, so definitely check out the comparison swatches I have in the video on the La Comet blushes. I'll leave that linked below. So if you don't have anything that matches, it's a great product to add in, but there are a lot of coral blush shades out there that are fairly similar. And moving on, Chanel in the number one collection, they have released these cheek and or lip and cheek balms, essentially. 
This is shade number, I think this one's number one. Yes, Red Camellia. It looks very daunting in here. It kind of has like a jelly-like consistency. And if you pile on a lot of this, it can be tacky. But what I've noticed is that it really kind of um, blends into my skin. So we're gonna swatch these here. And you can see it gives like this really gorgeous flush. And I've actually been wearing this one a lot. This is another product that, you know, you can wear underneath foundation and it looks really beautiful. So I particularly like using some of these deeper shades underneath foundation. I think it just gives a really gorgeous look and very natural. Then we have number two, Healthy Pink. And there we go. So it's called Healthy Pink, but it's really much more peachy. I think it's a really nice, like kind of more natural looking peachy shade. This is one that is a little bit lighter. You can build it up, but this is one that I would probably wear more so on top of foundation versus underneath. And then here's the other one. This one's three, Vital Beige. This one took me by surprise because I feel like it looks different <laughs> um, in person than it did online can see it's a lot more intense. This is one that I have to wear underneath and it's a brown based shade, but there is like a touch of like, uh, I wouldn't really say red per se, like there's red mixed with brown. It's almost like a brown mixed with a touch of rosewood. That's how diluted the red tones actually are in there. I think it's a really beautiful color, but it did surprise me with its depth of color. Probably the most interesting shade in this is number four, Wake Up Pink. And this is interesting because, I mean, it looks kind of like a vibrant, like corally shade. But then when you go and you put it on, it actually does have more of a pinky hue on your, on your cheeks. So it's called Wake Up Pink. And it's kind of like pink with a little bit of a vibrant orange in there. And it really does just kind of liven up your complexion. I think it's, it's one of those like products that's like, wow, that really worked for me. <laughs> so then we have number five, which is Lively Rosewood. And this one's my favorite. So I really like this one. You can see it's cooler in tone. You've got rose and plumminess to it there's a i don't really consider it a true rosewood because there isn't as much of that like brickish red kind of hue to it um, but i think it's a really beautiful shade here and then number six is berry boost and this one is a really beautiful berry shade but it's um got a little bit you can see there's like some purple in there as well. So it's definitely cooler in tone. I think all six of these are really great. I really do like the formula on these. Are they my favorite cream blush formula? No, um, that still goes to like Clay de Poe. So like the Mario uh, cream blush sticks better. But I think these are nice. They're balmy, but they kind of soak into your skin a bit. And they work really well underneath and over foundation in my opinion. Now, I don't pile on the color. If you do, it's going to be sticky. If you don't, wait 10 minutes and it like sinks in and then you'll feel like a little bit of texture where the product is, but not sticky enough for like your hair to get into it or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think these are really nice. And for me, my top colors would be five, Rosewood, four, uh, the Wake Up Pink, and one, Red Camellia. So those are my favorites. I I don't know. I mean, I think these two are tied, number four and number one, but number five is definitely my favorite. Now let's talk about lip balms. <laughs> so Chanel has come out with new Rouge Coco Balms. These are replacing the previous lip balm formula that they had. And I picked up all, I think there are seven of them. So I picked up all of them. I do have a video with swatches of all of them. This one here is Passion Pink, which is what I am wearing right now. And that's Passion Pink. 
I think it's a really, I personally really like these. Now I have heard from a couple of subscribers who have said that they've had certain shades that have been drying on them. For me personally, I have not had any, I have not experienced any drying of my lips from these, but they're, um, you know, they're a colored lip balm. So they are providing color. They're providing a little hydration, but don't expect them to like really work on, you know, repairing your lips or anything like that. They're, they're definitely not going to be like that. It's really more of a soft, light lip color, a little bit lighter than lipstick, but there are definitely some shades that are a little bit more vibrant. Like this one, this is one sheer layer on my lips, but I can build this up to be a bit more vibrant. And then you can see you get more of that kind of lipstick look, but you have a bit of a sheen. Now these, I feel like they sink into my lips a little bit as I'm wearing them. So the sheen will decrease. I think that's true of the Dior lip balms as well. Now in the Dior lip balms, um, this is from the New Look Collection 728. They also released some other Dior lip balms that are colored relatively recently. They're not technically part of the spring summer line, but let me just show you what this one looks like. This is New Rose 728 from Dior. And it's a rosewood shade. I absolutely love it. Now, between the two of these, and I do have a comparison, you know, I talk about the differences between these in the video on the Dior lip balms, which I'll leave linked below. But the Dior lip balms, you have, they're more buildable than the Chanel. The Chanel, yes, you can get that sheer look and then you can build it up. But with the Dior, you can build up the colors aside from a couple, you know, you can build up those colors with more of a variance than the Chanel. So, um, something to note there, I do think both formulas are nice. They, you know, have slight differences. I feel like the Dior feels a little bit thinner and waxier compared to the Chanel, which feels a little bit creamier as for which one I find more comfortable long-term on the lips. It's really hard to say, you know, I honestly, I really like both of them. And if you're somebody who loves tinted lip balms, I'd recommend picking up one of each to try, but if you can get your hands on the new rose, which is exclusive to the Dior website, and it comes in this packaging. So it's not listed with the other lip balms. It's listed with the new look lipsticks, but this is, I really like this one. This one's my favorite out of all of the ones I picked up of the Dior ones. Now, as for the Chanel ones, my favorite ones from there, um, I really like number 19, 918, My Rose, which let's put that one right here. So here's My Rose. This one is one that I wear a lot. And then I also really like 914 Natural Charm, which is more of a nude shade. So I really like all of these. So I think they're all great options. It's really hard to give an edge to one over the other, but I guess I would have to give the edge to the Dior because, you know, I, I feel like the hydrated feeling lasts a little bit longer on my lips than the Chanel and it's in refillable packaging. So if you get this one, you can keep this packaging no matter what color you put in it. But regardless, if it's in the regular packaging, you know, it is still going to be um, refillable. So this just pulls out. And this here is another shade that I really like. This is 586 Dior Bloom. Let's put that right here. So this is another one that I really like and just show you the refill if I can get this off. There we go. So it just clips in here and just make sure you snap it in so you can hear that little click and there you go. So I think, I guess those features are going to give it a little bit of a leg on the Chanel and I'd have to double check the prices, but I want to say the Dior is a couple of dollars less expensive. And I almost forgot one of the things that Dior actually has going for it over the Chanel is the fact that they have different finishes. So this is 200 Terra Bella in a matte finish. So there's matte and satin finishes. So, you know, the fact that you've got more variety there, that's something that's really nice. And both sets of these bombs are permanent to their, their brands. 
However, the new rose shade here is going to be limited edition. Now, lipsticks. Dior came out with a couple lipsticks. I only picked up the one 565 Cherry Topaz. And I have to say that I do like this color. Um, it has this really nice vibrancy to it. It has a, a touch of orange in it. So it's a little bit corally in my opinion. Um, so it's really, it kind of reminds me of like a toned down blend of fluorescent pink and orange. <laughs> and I have to say it actually looks really nice on, uh, you can put this on Shirley oh, and you know, I think that looks really nice if you want something light, but if you want something that really pops, you can layer this one up. So I, I really do like that lipstick and, um, it is a limited edition shade. So I would recommend that. Now for the La Comet lipsticks from Chanel, they came out with a bunch of these. These are the Rouge Allure Velvets, but what's different from these from their regular ones is they have a little extra luminosity and some shimmer particles in them. So they all have a touch of, you know, glitter essentially in them. And I'm just gonna swatch my favorite ones. So this one here is 138 Rouge V Radiant. I'll put these right here. So I have the regular Rouge V, they're, they're, they're very, very similar. If you have one, you don't need the other one, in my opinion, because really the only difference is the little bit of gold shimmer, and you don't really notice that so much on the lips. It's just that the way the light hits it gives it a little bit more um, sheen, essentially. Then we have 148 Rouge Cosmique. Oops, sorry. Um, I really like this shade here. I think it's a really beautiful red shade. It's actually pretty similar to the Chanel number no. five emblematique, um, but I love it. And then we have 178 Brun Celeste. This one is the one that is, this one is the one that is a little bit patchy because you can see how sheerly this one goes on. It's not as opaque as the others. So it can look a little bit patchy if you're trying to build up the color. But I think it's such a unique shade. It's like brown with some like eggplant purple in there. Um, I really, really like it. So I have gotten past the fact that it can go on not so smoothly when it's sheer. And I absolutely love it. And then this one here is 118 Bois de Rose Astral. And this one here is just like a, a neutral warm rose. Uh, or, sorry, a mid-tone <laughs> warm rose. Um, so those are going to be my favorites from, from these. And I think they're all really nice. You definitely don't need to pick up as many as I did here, but I think they are great formulas, great colors. If there's something that you like, definitely, you know, pick one up. The La Comet are limited edition. So they should be appearing at department stores though, at some point as well. So from what I understand, all of these Chanel items uh, from the La Comet, so the La Comet blushes and the La Comet lipsticks will be at department stores. The La Paza items already are. The number one from Chanel is going to be exclusive to Ulta and Chanel. And the Dior collections are on Dior's website and bits and pieces should be available at other retailers, but a lot of the items are exclusive to Dior. All right, and I think this is the last item. This is one of the Dior Lip Maximizers in shade 027. I think it's called Opal Glow. But I I thought it was gonna be more lavender because I guess the way the light hits it, um, the promo photos made it look kind of like a like an opalescent lavender shade. I'm trying to find a good place to put this. We'll put it right up here. And you can see that it catches the light nicely. However, I don't think this is a must have. Um, the Lip Maximizer formula I like, but I don't love. It's not a favorite of mine, but you know, for the right color, I, you know, I can really enjoy it. And I think this is a product I will use a lot to top lipsticks and things like that and kind of give it like a, something a little different, but it's, I don't know, it's not that special. And I do think it's, pretty similar to one of the Chanel lip glosses. And I have that swatched in, in the video. Let me just apply this on the lipstick. So I blotted the lipstick a bit and just putting this on now, let's add a little more. So you can see that it gives a really nice sheen to it. And 
the color change, you know, the opalescent quality of it is not super evident. And these are lip maximizers, which are lip plumping. So there is going to be that minty uh, scent to it, which is fairly strong, but I think that's fairly normal for lip maximizers. <laughs> any any product that is supposed to maximize and plump your lips is going to be pretty intensely mint. So again, I think it looks really nice. It's just not that noticeable for having the opalescent qualities. Um, you know, it's very easy to mistake it for a clear gloss. All right, I think this was the one that looked similar. This is the Pat McGrath Gloss and Alien Jellic. Let me put that right here. Yeah, so you can see they're they're very close. So I feel like you don't really need both of them if you have it. And I like both of these, but I just was not expecting them to be quite so similar. I really thought the Dior was gonna have more of a lavender hue to it. I was really excited for that. So I think that is everything from the Dior and Chanel collections that have recently released. So I hope this has been helpful. I know it can be really overwhelming to see all of these new options that have come out all at the same time, which you know I think is a little silly. It probably made more sense for the brands to spread it out. People probably would end up buying more if they can buy little bits at a time. But you know, I hope this was helpful in kind of narrowing things down, seeing some of the swatches and so forth, since a lot of these items are limited edition. And again, I do have swatches and comparisons of everything in the individual videos for these collections, and I will leave them all linked down below in the description box. And I keep all of the links to the objects in retail for on my shop list. So I'll have that linked down below as well. And please let me know what you guys have been thinking about these items. Did you pick anything up? Have you been enjoying them? Which ones are your favorites? I'd love to know your thoughts. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy.